Hi, my name is Toby and today's quest is to craft an exciting base that mimics a battlefield with many of the base crafting secrets applied. The result will have many small details to make it immediately recognizable as a true place of conflict, surrounded by a believable rocky scenery with vibrant colors, plants and rubble. My bases look boring and that has to stop. Just look at these flat surfaces, maybe there is a rock here and there, but that's it. One simple color and a driver on top, oh this is not good. And they are just one step away from these classic goblin green bases from back in the day. This needs to change. So let's start by showing our protagonist for today, it's this old hammer troll originally from the Battle for Skull Pass box. This one over here. The old plastic base it ships with has even some rubble built into the base and battlefield like bits on it. But a troll or Trogoth in Age of Sigma needs a 50mm base, so this brick over here has to go. Let's make our own more epic and better version. First step, the foundation. Enough with the boring flat plane bases, this creature needs to be elevated. We need something to mold, so it's time for the green stuff. After yellow and blue got a good mix, I put a big lump in the middle of the base, like a little hill for the troll to stand on. It's important to elevate our protagonist and give him the well-deserved focus and center of attention. Test stand and perfect. And now it's time for some rubble. Let's design the world this slightly disturbed troll, trogoth, something is living in. I imagine a scorched battlefield, a place where true warriors have fallen and war machinery has been destroyed. And this will fit perfectly to our miniature, which is basically throwing with a draven trash. And this leads us to bits, bits and bits. I found this wheel of an old hammer cannon and a stormcast eternal head, arm and spear. Also this shield from... I don't really know where it's from, but it's a nice shield and we're going to use it. And we also have this leftover sword from a cursed city skeleton. The final piece is going to be this orc shield. I think that's fitting because rubble of all kind of faction will make this battlefield believable. And I would say let's put this on the base. All these bits will be placed in a random-ish matter, like this. That's good. Only the spear with the little banner here is missing to imitate this look over here. I think it's the icing on the cake for a true scorched battlefield. Perfect. Now it's time to rock. Instead of just using plain sand to base this, we need different kind of rocks so everything looks to scale and looks believable. For this we'll use bark pieces as the biggest boulders on the battlefield. Plastic sprue bits which I cut to small spiky shapes as the middle size rocks and a mix of small and tiny grain sand to represent pebbles. And finally for in-scale mud we are going to use the technical color from GW called Sterland Mud. First we put down the boulder rocks, also known as the bark pieces, then we are going to glue the plastic sprue pieces and lastly the sand. After everything is dry we mud up the rest of the base and that looks quite promising. Time to prime the mini and the base. Just in case you wonder, yes this troll will be painted until the end of this video. But a subscribe would still be nice and supports the channel. And you won't miss upcoming videos like this where I wander through the strange corners of our hobby. But enough shameless plugging, let's give this battlefield some color. First we stipple and dry brush the ground, not just layer for layer with some highlights on top, but different tones to make this mud or ground look great. Different shades of brown, green, brownish green as well as grey. This gives the ground a mossy and real feel. The rocks will be base coated with a dark grey and then layer by layer with brighter highlights on top. The contrast between the rocks and the ground helps the eye to identify the details from afar. Now it's time to bring some color to the bits and pieces of the battlefield. First, time for some metal. Let's start with the rim of the shield, uh, the tip of the spear and move to other metal parts with the good and classic lead breaker from Citadel. The Stormcast armor will be golden of course, come on it's a classic. And the other shield will be copper. We can weather it later and create a nice bluish patina. 
first the wooden parts will be brown and the weapons should have some contrast so let's make them red. The symbol on the orc shield will also be red and that's all in all a really good complementary color to the blue stormcast shoulder pad. Next, as promised, the weathering. Let's make all this rubble look old and messed up. It's laying in a muddy place so it should really look like that. Did somebody say Nuln oil and a cracks earth shade? These are perfect for the metal parts and who am I kidding, pretty much most other parts as well, like the weapons and the shields. We dab it sparsely on the muddy ground as well, just here and there to create more color variation. And now it's time to properly paint the copper. I live in Hamburg, Germany and in this city copper plays a big role in the city landscape. Many historic buildings here have copper roofs and most of them have this iconic green bluish patina and most notably our town hall. So I want the copper on the shield really look like this. Our tool of choice for this is Vallejo Blue Green. The shield gets a very thin glaze to create this old corroded patina effect. And we can apply more and more layers to intensify this. And my other new favorite tool when it comes to weathering is actually contrast paints. Gyrax sewer and the skeleton horde are perfect to mess up the weapons and tint the ground here and there a little bit more as well. Let's have a look at our progress so far. Yeah, something is still missing here and there. What do you think? I think grass would give this base more life and a realistic look. But before we start with the tufts, it's time to finally paint this troll. Let me quickly walk you through this. I first base coated the skin and the rubble in his head. And oof. Maybe I leaned a little bit too strong into a smurf look here. Let's correct that. Next step, more defined shadows. But instead of black, I use purple for his skin and a reddish brown for the shadows on the boulder in his hand. Then let's see more highlights. Okay, less smurfy. Uh, let's climb the highlight ladder a little bit more. Better. And even more highlights and details and I think this troll is done. Nice. Next and final step, the tufts. Variation is key again, so even though I really like the brownish ones over here, the strong green tone of these will bring us more contrast and contrast always wins. I cut most of these into two parts and put one here and there and over here. But we are not done yet. Time to paint the tufts. Yes, we are going to add more variation to the grass. We tone down the green to brown and stipple bright green onto the dead grass. And this ties all together and now it's time to look at the finished project in all its glory. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. What a journey! This project really reminds me of a Crutox I converted and you won't believe how great that base turned out. You should watch that video here next.